Hey everyone, my name is Marta Yortz, and I'm the Director of Children's Ministry at Jupiter First Church. I'm grateful that we get to spend some time digging into the Big God story together today. Before we get started, you're going to want to gather your family, and this week you will need your Bible, some paper, markers or crayons, and any other art supplies you have around your house. You'll have 60 seconds to get ready, and a timer will start right now. you. Gracias. Grazie. Merci. Danke. Thanks. Do you know how to say thank you in another language? How do you say it in Hawaiian? Mahalo. We are going to say thank you every way we know because this month we are talking about gratitude. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. No matter what language you say it in, saying thank you rocks. Now let's prepare our hearts and minds to say thank you to the one who deserves our gratitude more than anyone. In Psalm chapter 9 verse 1, David wrote, Lord, I will give thanks to you with all my heart. I will tell about all the wonderful things you have done. That's what we're going to do right now as we prepare for a time of worship. Let's tell God how thankful we are for his love and for all the things he has done. Feel free to spread out so you have room to sing, dance, and worship God however you feel led. Every time I'm feeling down, you pick me up. I'm grateful for the way you've been a friend to me.
We continue our partnership with the Hope Project International as they serve kids who live in Casa Shalom. Casa Shalom is a foster care home located in Guatemala. Kids live there for different reasons while they're unable to live with their parents for either a short period of time and sometimes for a long time. One way we can help those kids out is by making sure that they are able to go to school. For $105, we can send a child to school for a whole year. That's a pretty incredible way that we can show love. If you and your family would like to participate in this project, you can have your parents log on to their online giving and make a donation for Hope Project Casa Shalom in Guatemala, or they can donate at the link included in the parent email. Let's go ahead and pray for the Hope Project and for Casa Shalom. Father, thank you so much for all of the ways that you bless us. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to go to school. Thank you for our teachers, for our teacher aides, for the principals and secretaries, for bus drivers and lunch ladies and coaches and all the people who work together in schools to make sure that we are able to learn and grow and succeed. We pray that you would bless them. Thank you so much for all the people who serve at Casa Shalom and the Hope Project. We pray that you would bless them and that you would help them to do their jobs with love and with the best ability that they have. Help them to succeed in caring for these kids. We pray that all things would be for your glory. And we thank you so much for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. When Jesus was on earth, he did some truly incredible things. People were amazed by what he said and did. In the book of Luke, we can read about something Jesus did that shows us something really important about gratitude. Open your Bible up to Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. The Bible is made up of 66 books divided into two sections, the Old and New Testaments. The Old Testament tells the big God story from when God created everything until just before Jesus came to earth as a human. The New Testament tells us the big God story from Jesus' birth until the creation of the new heaven and new earth which are yet to come. Remember, if you're having trouble finding Luke, you can always use the table of contents at the front of your Bible. Luke is in the New Testament and it is one of the four Gospels. Those Gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Gospels are the good news eyewitness accounts about Jesus that were written down so that we could discover who Jesus is. We're going to be in chapter 17, starting in verse 11. Chapters are the big numbers and verses are the little numbers. Chapters and verses simply help us find Bible stories a little faster. Now that we're ready to dig into the big God story, let's go ahead and check in with our friend Erica. <music> Don Q Shu In. Don Q Shu In. Wow, German is our hard language. <laughs> Hi, I'm Erica. I'm learning how to say thank you in other languages because if I ever travel the globe, I still want to have gratitude. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. But saying thank you is really hard as it turns out. For instance, in Armenia, if you were to open the door for me, I have to say, Kanorakalution, if I wanted you to know that I was grateful. <gasps> or, if you gave me a stick of gum in Mongolia, I'd have to say thank you by saying, Beyalarla. And then, if we were in Spain and you gave me directions to the biblioteca, <gasps> I'd have no choice but to say, Grace. E ooze. Grace gracias. Grace gracias! Oh, I actually know that one. <gasps> Nine times out of ten, it seems like we forget to show gratitude when we should. But as you'll see in today's story, saying thank you doesn't have to be that hard. Even in Romania! Mole to a tech. Everybody! Yeah, that seemed right. Devon Shivab. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. 
the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. Outside the village on the border between Samaria and Galilee lived 10 lepers. We didn't know their name or their stories, but we did know at least one of them was a Samaritan, a group that Jewish people distrusted. Call that man Zach. Hi there. I'm sorry, not allowed to shake your hand. Leprosy was a painful skin disease, and there was no doctors or medicines to treat it. But even worse than the sores were the loneliness. Lepers weren't allowed to be around anyone who were healthy, not even their own families. They had to keep more than a social distance. So if Zach had a wife or kids, probably hadn't seen him in years. Oh, my little boys. All grown up by now, I bet. The 10 lepers' life seemed hopeless. All they can do was stand back and yell at anybody who passed by. Stay away! Don't come close. But we do need food. If you could just leave some under that willow tree by the creek, uh, we'd be grateful. Then, one day, news reached the lepers of travelers approaching along the border road. Big crowd. I hear it's that Jesus fella. The teacher? They say he makes sick people well. You're a Samaritan. <laughs> Why would he care about you? Hey, you know, what have I got to lose? Zach hobbled toward the road, walking stick in hand. The other lepers straggled after him. They can see a crowd now, traveling along the road. People won't like us standing so close. I'm not throwing away my shot. Zach can see faces now. The crowd grouped around a man in the middle. The man had a strong face and kind eyes. Jesus, master, have pity on us. To the leper's surprise, Jesus stopped right in the middle of the road. Jesus, master, Jesus, Jesus over have here. pity please. on us. Please have master. pity on us. The crowd around Jesus backed away, whispering. Jesus stood firm as Zach and the leopards dared to limp closer. Jesus! Master! Have pity on us! As the leopards neared, Jesus took a long, clear look. Everyone went silent. Zach could hardly breathe. Then Jesus smiled. Go. Show yourselves to the priests. Zach gasped. The only way a leper could approach a priest was if that he confirmed that he had been healed. But as Zach glanced down, his heart sank. His knees and his feet were still shriveled and splotchy. His knees still ached. Oh. Jesus moved on, and the crowd followed. The lepers stared at each other. Well, that happened. I don't get it. Well, we should go to the priests, like he told us. Uh, I guess it can't hurt. Any more than it already does. Limping, the lepers headed out across the field towards the town. They hesitated as they reached the creek. We'll have to wade across. Painfully, the man clambered down the bank. Zach's stick got caught in the twisted root of a willow tree. <clears throat> the stick went flying, and he tumbled to the ground. Ouch! Instinctively, he jumped to his feet. How'd you do that? Do what? Just jump up. Zach glanced down again. This time, his feet and his legs were strong and whole, skin clear and healthy. Look, my skin, it's clean. The other man glanced down at their own arms and legs and bodies. I'm all better, woohoo! The lepers laughed and danced till they cried, amazed at what Jesus had done. You gotta get to the priest! Race you! The leopard splashed across the creek, hurtling towards the town. Zach stopped at the water's edge, and the others ran ahead. I'll get to see my boys again. But even as Zach imagined the joy that would come, a face flashed in his head. Jesus, he's healed me. He's the one who's made me whole. 
turning back, Zach hurried toward the road. He ran fast, catching up to Jesus and the crowd as they reached the village. Jesus? Jesus! The crowd parted quickly as Zach headed straight for Jesus. Praise God, I'm well! Zach threw himself down on the dusty road at Jesus' feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Zach lifted his head. Dust mixed with tears of joy. Jesus smiled, but his eyes searched the road behind him. Weren't all 10 healed? Where are the other nine? As Zach shook his head, Jesus turned to the crowd. Didn't anyone else return to give praise to God except this outsider? Everyone was silent. It was clear that Zach was the only one. Jesus smiled down at him. Get up and go. Your faith has healed you. Zach leapt to his feet as he hurried to see the priests. He had delayed his chance to see his family by a short time, but it was worth it to see the man who had given him back his life. So, there were 10 guys healed by Jesus. All of them were probably really grateful, but only one of them took the time to actually say it out loud. I think sometimes we're kind of like the nine guys who didn't say anything. It's not that we're not grateful that mom made dinner and washed the dishes. We are grateful. We just assume mom knows that we're grateful. So we forget to say, Thank you. And we're definitely grateful when a teacher takes extra time to help us with schoolwork. We just, I don't know, don't feel comfortable telling her, thank you. And anytime we take a moment to think about all the things God has done for us, our hearts are probably overflowing with gratitude. But we don't actually tell him, thank you. You probably feel grateful all the time. To parents, to teachers, to friends, to God, to the guy who bags your groceries. All you need to do is remind yourself to take two seconds to say the words, thank you. That's the one thing to remember today. Say thank you. Or if you prefer, you could say, Arigato, Maki, Terim, Terimaka, Si. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. At Jesus' words, the Samaritan hurried on his way to see the priests. He had decided it was worth it to go back and thank Jesus first, because Jesus had given him back his life. This Samaritan gave all of us a good example to simply say thank you. Let's do that right now. Let's go ahead and pause to thank God for being so good to us. God, thank you so much for all the things that you do in our lives, both big and small. Thank you for taking care of us and for noticing the things that we need. We pray that you would help us to remember to always choose to say thank you to you and to others who do things to help us as well. Thank you so much for your love and your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. It's hard to believe that only one of the 10 men came back to thank Jesus, but we don't have to be like the other nine. We can be like the man who did come back. We can choose to thank God for his love and forgiveness. We can also say thank you to the people around us, to our family, our friends, our teachers, our teammates, anyone who does something for us. When you're thankful, don't keep it inside. Don't be in such a hurry that you forget to thank the people who have helped you. Say thank you. Pay attention to the things that people are doing for you and take a second to thank them. Remember, it feels good to have others thank you for the things you've done. So treat others the way you want to be treated and take time to say thank you. You can say thank you to God as you pray or by singing a worship song to him. You can say thank you to others simply by saying the words thank you 
or you can write them a note, draw them a picture, or do something kind for them. Really, there are limitless ways to show others that you are grateful. Today, we are going to do something special for our teachers. Some of you are going to school in your classroom. Some of you are learning from your teacher and virtual learning at home or somewhere else, and others have begun homeschooling. All of your teachers are working so hard to help you grow, learn, and succeed. So in a way of practicing saying thank you, today we are going to make thank you cards for our teachers. Go ahead and get out some paper, markers, crayons, and anything else you have to make a great looking card. We're going to give you five minutes to start working on your card. And don't worry, if you don't finish it right now, that's okay. You can always finish it at the conclusion of this kid's first service. When you're working, I want you to think about how your teacher helps you. How are you grateful for their help? If you're able, write down why you are thankful. If you need a little help, go ahead and ask your parents or older siblings to help you out as well. Being specific in our thank yous is a really important thing. It shows that you actually noticed what the other person did. Are you ready to practice some more gratitude? Here we go.
how's this month's memory verse coming along? I hope you are practicing it and that you are either close to learning it or you are well on your way. Let's practice saying this month's memory verse together. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His faithful love continues forever. Psalm chapter 136 verse 1. We can thank God for all the good and loving things he does because God is good and loving. Let's keep thinking about saying thank you in today's family talk time. Gather your family to discuss these questions together. Number one, have you ever felt weird about thanking someone? Sometimes it can feel a little bit weird. Maybe your friends don't say thank you very often or you're a little shy. But number two, how can you deal with those feelings but still say thank you when someone helps you? What if you're in an argument with your parents and your dad brings you all of your folded laundry? Or what if a teacher you don't get along with sends you a nice email about your work? Number three, why is it important to say thank you when you're angry or frustrated? Why would it be even more important then? And finally, number four, how can saying thank you strengthen a relationship in your life right now? I hope you and your family had a great discussion together and that you even thought of reasons to thank one another too. This week's family activity is a super special one because we're going to do a gratitude challenge. We're going to take videos and photos to send to other people to say thank you. Before you do that though, I want you to grab a piece of paper and write thank you on it. It's going to be the poster that you will hold up in your photos or videos. Then make a short video message thanking another person for how they help you. Or take a picture of your family, make sure you get that selfie going, and send it along to the person that you want to thank. Make sure that you have that thank you sign in your frame. Send the photos and videos to the people you want to thank, and let's spread some joy with our gratitude. This is a great way to say thank you. It's pretty easy to thank someone, even though we don't always remember or choose to say thank you when someone helps us. There are lots of reasons why we don't always feel like saying thank you, but it is important to do. How do you feel when someone thanks you? I'm guessing you feel pretty good. You might feel seen, appreciated, and valued. You feel like the other person saw how you helped and feel like they're happy with what you did for them or with what you gave them. You feel good that they noticed and appreciated your effort. It feels good to be thanked. And think how good the people will feel when they see your thank you videos and photos. So are you up for the gratitude challenge? I sure hope so. Let's go ahead and close our time together with a prayer of thankfulness to God. God, thank you so much for everything good in our lives. We know all of it comes from you. 
Help us to remember to say thank you to others and also to say thank you to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. That is all that we have for you this week. Below this video, you will find links to download or print the God Time card, the Parent Cue, the Family Activity, and more. Stay connected to us by email or on Facebook. I will see you next week for another adventure in the Big God Story. I hope you have lots of fun practicing your gratitude by saying thank you this week. I'll see you real soon.